Every part of it can fall and crumble before you. But only one part of it's off. So part of this was the design choice to show how powerful the boss character is, right? Yeah. And part of this right? was the design choice to show you how powerful he was. His psychic, his psychic kinesis powers and how they can sort of overcome you. And I don't think that it has to be a The actual clip itself was about 20 minutes long and it took him like 12 lives. Um, wow. <laughs> so you can kind of see where these games come in sort of... Um, uh, where game design really comes in handy to learn from when you're observing it. So in this situation, when you saw Silver the Hedgehog um, just decimating Sonic, even though the person playing was trying to defeat him as best it could, there were just so many, so many things wrong with the game design itself in terms of how long he had in between when he could get a boss hit in and when the boss could hit him back, and how long he could sort of um, stay invincible once hit so that he could retreat. Uh, even in the camera angle itself and the camera work, it everything just sort of some things that were in place that were good were defeated ultimately by the very few things that were in place that were bad. And so here's an example of games that you want to break down that are bad so that you can understand exactly what not to do. Um, and so we've studied analysis sort of very lightly here. Um, when you go and apply this sort of these sort of heuristics to any games that you play. When you're playing them, examine, you know, what, what am I visually observing? Could this be observed without audio? Does it tie into the audio extremely heavily? How much active audio does it use? How much passive audio does it use? What is it trying to tell me? Basically, ask the questions that you think would help you pull answers out of the game. Sort of get a feel for where the designer's coming from. And also, if there's something that you really like about the game, try to see why the designer did it that way and why not another way. Experiment with different sort of perspectives on it why a person would do a third-person camera instead of a first-person camera for a game. Um, does it affect how the game would feel? When you play Skyrim and you play third-person, do you feel different than when you play first-person? That sort of um, design choice is, is critical and key in a lot of games. Uh, and so how about evaluation? Well, evaluation is basically taking all of this sort of analytical uh, approach and then saying, well, how well did they do this? So when you look at Sonic 06, you say, they really wanted you to feel powerless in the face of this boss who has psychic powers. How well did they do it? They did it too well because they actually broke everything when you were trying to play the game and it made the game very, very frustrating for you. So you want to walk a, a very thin line when you're making, making a game between making it challenging and making it impossible. And that's a very key, uh, or a key goal of game design as a whole. So, uh, Take from this, if anything, just that you need to always constantly be asking yourself questions about a game. Even if you hate the game, try and ask questions to break it down and see exactly what parts you might like to take from it. Because even in the worst game, there's got to be something you can take from it. A lesson, if anything, on how to not make games. Um, that's my presentation, guys. Uh, uh, uh. Any well, questions at all? Well, my brother, yeah. when I don't know that this is not, I've seen that video before, yeah. I didn't know it was really possible when he was freezing, it's not even obvious that Silver is attacking him. Yeah, that's something also. That I found bothering. I thought, when I watched that the first few times, I think that it's just freezing up for no apparent reason. Yeah, that's another thing to observe. That's a very good detail, actually, as well, in terms of how, that's also part of the conveyance of whether or not um, it's clearly understood that you're being attacked by an enemy or you're having an enemy attack you, or it's, yeah, it's an animation frame um, and an indication of UI too. So, uh, any other questions for me? So, uh, in the professional uh, review system of video games, uh, it's sort of become standard to have a scale on the quality of the game instead of the quality of recommendation for the game. Um, and I know the movie business actually goes for recommendation on their star system and not actually how good of a movie it was uh, yeah. from an artistic perspective. Yeah. Uh, for this evaluation thing, um, for when, when you're evaluating the game uh, and you keep in mind um, like how much fun it was for you or if you play through the experience like the designers intended to it, how are you able to uh, convey that idea to uh, other people? when you're comparing evaluations of like Sonic? Oh. So, 
your question is, um, when you're playing through the game, you're noting how much fun you're having at certain points. Yeah. Be it a lot of fun or a little bit of fun. Right. How do you convey the level of fun that you're having? Or the, your experience compared to someone else's different experience, experience especially for the, dri uh, the game type that is player driven. Part of it, part of what happens is um, your experience is going to bleed through no matter what when you try to explain a game experience to somebody because it's always subjective. Keeping, getting the actual objective parts of the review out are the main concerns. So being able to analyze the game is one thing. Being able to break it down and say, what is it trying to do right now? What is it trying to convey to me? Sort of looking at a picture that's hand drawn by a kindergartner that has um, a crayon cow on it, and it's really crudely drawn, you can say, what is this picture trying to do? It's trying to show me a cow. How well is it doing it? Well, I mean, a college kid could probably do it better, but still. Like, that sort of thing. So when you're reviewing a game or you're wanting to tell somebody about your experience with the game, you're always going to be able to tell them, well, it was good or it was bad. But being able to analyze it and break it down is really what helps you say, it was bad because these reasons, here's what it was trying to do, here's what it failed to do, here's where it could have succeeded, and here are some things that it actually did succeed at doing. Does that yeah. answer your question? Cool. Okay. Uh, any other questions? All right. Well, thank you guys.